Wait a minute. Hello, everybody. This is Ken 7. It's a Mark 7 Fiesta. As my main protagonist of the channel, but I never made a livery for it, and I can't believe it's even got different colored wheels on each side. And I can't believe I've never made a livery for it. It's like my favorite car ever. So, shall we make a livery for it? Because he's in the next episode and he looks too boring. So, we need to splash a few decals on him, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm just gonna freehand it. Shall we see how we go? So, first thing I was trying is I was just trying to like stick. So, I was just trying to stick a big banner on the side like that, but it looks a bit pants. So, I feel like to do it individually is a pain in the bum. So, what I like to do is go into Photoshop basically. If we open up Photoshop, this is a much easier way of making a livery, I think. It's a way I can basically get all my logos in one place and move them around. So it's usually the first thing you do is like you start stockpiling things, you know what I mean? The next thing I need is like a graphic illustration of the car, you know what I mean? So I can actually see the dimensions what I'm working with. What I like to do is also take orthographic shots of the car and blend a lot up. And then you can basically like do the side, the roof, <coughs> the front, and the back. But the front and the back, we don't need them for now. So what I like to do is select them all, press Control and G, and I'll put them in a group for you. Just rename it, and then probably do the same for these, just to make it easier. Uh, obviously, I've got some old stuff in here, so I'll do the same for that. This is what we're working with. This, what's this? Start a new save. Control Alt S and save it somewhere else, basically. So now we can turn the front and the back off because we obviously want these, don't we? And we'll probably concentrate on the on this side here. We also need to acknowledge what image size we are as well. So what image size are we? If we change this to pixels, we're 5,000 by 5,000 pixels with a 300. It should be pretty good. 300's the main thing, you know what I mean? It should be enough. So the next thing we need to do is make sure this side's at the bottom out of the way. And I was wondering. Would this texture work here? You know what I mean? So if we now press control, if we find the side and press control on the side, uh -uh, if you over this box here, press control and then select it, it'll select it like this. So what we can do now is click on this layer, this texture layer, and press control and J. And what that will do is create, if we move it above, it will create the texture. Turn that off, turn that off. You can see we've got a texture now. If you just move these out of the way, this is your V tool if you need to know. We've got like a texture on the side of the car now, which could be quite interesting. Might not be, could be, but I want to try it. I'm probably gonna want to like not have that much. So if we quickly scratch out this area with a pen. Now to use a pen, you press P and then you click and drag it and you'll create this like curved vector. Now a tip here is to hold Alt and then click in the middle and it'll make it a sharp corner, it'll reset the curve, you know what I mean? So that when we select on the next one, it's like a fresh one that we can pull and drag it out. Or if you just click it, it'll carry on that curve, yeah? What we want to do is just trim out this bottom piece, don't we? So if we come over to here and just cut out the wheels, because it's affecting my eyes. You gotta bear in mind as well, it's not critical. This is just for visuals. But we need to do the Alt and click on it to freshen it up. And then we come over to here, if you now press control and enter, it will make the selection. Now, if we come down to our layer that has the texture and press backspace, it will delete that area for us. You know what I mean? Just so we can get a visual. Now, if we wanted to do that for the windows as well, you can. So if we just, and we kind of got like an idea where things are gonna land, basically. What you usually do in Photoshop, if you're gonna do something destructive, you duplicate the layer. So if we press control and J, and duplicate that layer. We can turn that one off, look. And what we can now do is, should we put you in the middle a bit more? Like this. If you press space, you can like, use the hand to move it around. I feel like I need to half this. Like, if I press E for eraser, and then press the square comma button to make it bigger and smaller like that. If we check up here, look, we've got a soft edge on as well. And that's what we need. And if we do a diagonal cut down it like that, I feel like that that would look good. Yeah? And then say like we wanted to change the color of this, we would press Control and U and then click Colorize. We could actually change the color of it. 
I feel like blue and yellow is the theme here. Turn the yellow up a little bit. So that if we turn now the previous layer on, we have a color transition. Now the transition's not big enough for me though, so I'm gonna try it again, but this time I'm gonna put a bigger fluff on it. So in order to get a bigger fluff, we need a bigger brush. So if we go really big with it, really big, because it's more the tip we want, don't we? And then we go bosh like that. What we can do then is come down a size, because we know that the wing, we definitely want that empty, don't we? So if we just completely smash that off, maybe go a little bit up there like that when we do it again turn it yellow turn it up like that. And then we turn it back on We've got like a longer crossfade now aren't we? we could even bring it back some i think so if we go back to the big brush like that. because and then we brought it down here like that there we go what we can do again is control j that one so we've got another copy we are destroying that one and on this one, we want to completely... Because I don't think it's going to translate well. Like, I couldn't imagine trying a vinyl matching it all up to the bonnet and the wing and stuff. So I just want that completely gone. We'll get rid of that. Now if we go to the big brush uh, and just fade it in on the roof a bit better. Like so. But on the roof, I think as well, I'm going to delete a lot of the roof. Because it's one of those lines that's going to overlap and look a bit weird. So if we just get rid of it, like that, we also need to go to the yellow one. Just top that one up. Like that. And then we can even bring in the blue a bit more and just refine it. The more you refine this top edge, yeah, the better. Right. We also need the yellow one though. Right. If we fade this in here, it's not going to interfere with the overlap issue. Cause obviously you can't turn it once you're painting on the thing, can you? So if we just give it a hint, Press Z for zoom and then Alt to zoom out. We've kind of got ourselves a little texture, haven't we? Right, I probably should do the same here on the rear, shouldn't I? So let me quickly just do that. We definitely don't want it on the spoiler, do we? So we need to get rid of that. Follow the roof line down. See what I mean? It'd be a nightmare doing this in 3D, but here it's a little bit easier. But we still want a little overlap. I don't think the spoiler's in that layer anyway, but you know what I mean? We don't want it to like fall onto the rear and stuff. So we've got ourselves a base texture. Now I always find you need a base texture, you know what I mean? What we can do now is put some logos on. So if we use our V tool for the moving, click on it, and then we can drag it down. If we press Control and T, we can then adjust it, you know what I mean? So if we make it a bit smaller, and if you hold it in the corner, you can rotate it a little bit. Like I feel like it needs a bit of tilt because you got to simulate speed, are not you? You know what I mean? So it's usually simulate speed. I want it to fill the most of the rear rear up whilst this corner here touches, so it's like kind of like optimally placed. Like that. Now, what we can do is we can drop a shadow off of this. This is the beauty of Photoshop. You can't really do this in Blender. So if we go to drop shadow, I always like to go at this angle. I always go at this angle. Three quarter pose life from when I was younger. If you want, bring it away a little bit more like that. It's always good to put a bit of black down because it helps it bring it off the image. You know what I mean? You could also do like a black stroke as well, but I feel like I've got enough strokes going on in that. So now we've done that, we've got this one as well. I don't know whether I can use it. I've just brought it in just in case. We could probably use this somewhere. You know what I mean? But probably not. So we'll hide it. At the minute, we're doing all right. Not really decided what the colour of the car's going to be yet, but I think it's going to be blue. We're going with blue and yellow, aren't we? So a nice blue probably would go well with that. So what we potentially can do is get this side image. If we press Control and U, we might be able to colorize it. We can. So what we can do is we can like pick a base colour. Now I'm probably going to be a nice blue, you know what I mean? Good old traditional blue. Should we pump it up so we can actually see it? You know that really dark blue that's just starting to turn into purple? Or I'll just stick with blue. Oh, we can go yellow. I think we'll stick with blue. Blue colour, isn't it? Because we've got gold wheels as well, so it can't, it's pro probably going to go. That's going to help us. Now, what we probably need is like a name card down here, don't we? Most race cars have a name card. And they're usually quite simple. So if we go to a new layer, which is here, and we create a marquee maybe like that. if we press control and backspace it'll fill it in for you now what we can do is bring it down press control and d get rid of that what we can do is press control and t to then like adjust it to like 
kind of where we want it. Uh, we know we want it about there, don't we? That's about the size, but if we undo the rotation and press enter, because we need to be able to create more sub boxes to it, you know what I mean? For now, if we stroke it, where is it, that one? They've changed it now, and that one looks close enough. Change it to black, like that. It could probably turn it down a frez, like that. Then if we create a new marquee tool, like this, and a new layer, same again, alt and backspace, press control D to get rid of that, and then if we quickly just go into here with color overlay, we can quickly put color on, can't we? It's usually red. Now we've got a base, we can press control T and we can like adjust it to like wherever we want. And then press V if you want to fine tune it. Right. Uh, probably not the most amazing one. I would like to change that color because it's a bit too, it's just not right. Color's everything. Let's stick within the range, you know what I mean? So if we stick it on that one, and it's like the stroke, that's too keen as well. If you've noticed, I've used a blue. So if we just knock it down. Black's just too keen. What we can then do is put some text in it. Uh, his name is Ken7. So if we just put seven, uh -uh, press control T. Almost looks Swedish, then. His name's Ken7. Clever, you'll probably figure it out. We also need a number down. So what was his number? Where it's press enter on that. It's below the box. So if you just raise it up, you can see it. Uh -uh -uh. Press Control T again, make it bigger. Uh -uh. Just B, move it around, and then probably the box. Just Control T. If you hold Shift on the sides, you can like elongate it and stuff. It's got snapping on at the minute, which is annoying. If you zoom in, press Control T. You can adjust it, and it will usually snap into place. That should do us. If we just adjust this. Uh -uh. Symmetry is everything. Now we've got these three things. If we press V and start shifting and selecting extra things, so we get everything. We can make a box out of it. You know, put it in a group. What's it called? Name badge or something. And then if you press V, if you press the actual group and then Control T, it should move everything. Yeah, there you go. And then you can like make it smaller, rotate it and stuff. This is why we didn't rotate it straight away. But basically, that's how you can quickly generate things. I need to zoom in because the snapping's annoying. Press Control T again. You can see that because we've made it smaller as well, the stroke has become more severe. So we need to correct that stroke. So click on it, double click the stroke. We can just knock it down a phrase like that. And zoom out. We've got ourselves a name badge. Might be not the best one. You could like go on Google and make it a little bit better. But I'm just trying to show you how it works. You know what I mean? This front section here is too crazy for anything. I think. Just clean body work is going to excel on that. I might put some stickers on it, some extras. We also need to represent good old whale jar 3D. Don't we? Press enter. Control T, even though you probably, you know what I mean? But we need to slap this bad boy somewhere. It's probably going to be like there or something. Make it a bit smaller. This is why Photoshop's good, because you can just fanny around and test things. It's easy to move. And... So we need that logo in there. It looks a bit garish, doesn't it? Kind of needs breaking up a little bit. What a stroke sort it out. Wouldn't wish a stroke on anyone, but <laughs> should we try it? No, I don't like it. Should we try a shadow? Shadow. Shadow helps it pop. I don't know. Don't really like it. Fail safe. What we can do is go to the blending options, click on overlay like this, and it'll kind of like superimpose it. That kind of looks trick. You know, what I mean? you can knock the opacity down to make it not as keen, but. That's kind of interesting. What if we drop the shadow now? Maybe if we make it a little bit bigger so it's not as in your face. Ooh, interesting. That would work lovely on the wheels, wouldn't it? Around about there, so it's like mostly on. You know what I mean? It'd fall lovely onto that wheel arch, create a bit of like interest. So if we press enter, we've got ourselves a weird, <laughs> weird thing. Should we turn the background off just to make sure we can see what it looks like? I mean, so it's got this like white going onto it, but as an overlay. I don't know whether that's going to translate. So what we need to do is make sure that this layer is rasterized, yeah, to, to basically apply all those effects so that when we turn it off, it'll represent when the blue below it comes in. It'll turn blue when, yep, we have the opacity there. So what's the next thing we need to do? I think that's good for the side, don't you? What we need to do next is the roof which looks super annoying to do. But I know what we can do. Drag in this one, maybe. I was gonna bring some else in, but you know what I mean? Give it a bit of this. <laughs> You're usually looking from this angle, aren't you? So you kind of probably want it this way, like that, maybe. And if we, if we bring in another one of these, let's say put one there, duplicate it, and then flip it around using Control T, like that, move it up here. 
I kind of got a bit of symmetry going on that. Yeah, then we could do the same thing again with those with the overlay. So if we select overlay, not the opacity down. So what we could do now as well, if we select both these layers, so I can just affect one, if we press Control and E, when they're both selected, it'll merge them both together. Yeah, so then we can basically come in here, select our overlay, knock a bit of opacity down like that. Yeah, and we'll have the same effect as we did down there. So what we need now is that texture again, don't we? So we can resource that back again here. We only need a segment of it, don't we? So if we just quickly do a hot selection like that, press Control and J, we've got ourselves a little square. I can move this up to the top where everything is, for it just below that. It's probably going to be worth as well making a group out of these. And doing the same for this down here as well. Just stay on top of your workspace, basically. So yeah, we tied it up now. Lovely. If we just make this round right about the same, isn't it? <laughs> so what we can see here is we've got a roof. I'd like to keep this roof, actually. I like this roof. We should be able to make it so it overlaps lovely like that. I kind of like that. But we've got a spicy roof, haven't we? Yeah. So what we could do next is we just remove that out of there. So we've got a top, bring it down here. So we've got a side. Yeah, I'm happy. Should we turn them off? That's what needs to change this here. If we duplicate it and we change it yellow, we need to do half and half, don't we? Okay. And erase it. If you press control, if you can't see it as well, that usually helps. We do that across it. We've got ourselves two tone yet. There we go. Now I'm saying, brother. So if we now press Control Alt and S, we can save this as a PNG. PNG because we want want the see through bit. Press OK. We can basically now realize that we've done that wrong because this bit there. So we want to save it correctly. What we can now basically do is go into Blender and add them to our model now. So if we go into Blender, we've already got it open. We're in Texture Paint, and we need to create a new texture here. So if we press this plus button for a new texture, base color, we want to make sure it's black because we're using transparencies. We want to make sure we turn the alpha all the way down and make sure it's bumped up. I'm going to bump this up to 10,000 because 5,000 hours experience in Lego E. Yes. Oh, what the? Yep, 10,000 by 10,000. Press OK, we can see we've got a texture here. Right? So if we go into our side view, like that, get everything arranged so you can actually see. It's about, oh, about as much as we need, isn't it? So now we're here, we can basically come over here, ignore that, and you've probably got a one like this. So if we press open and we open what we've just made, which is this one, the top and the side, if we open it, we can see it's all squiggly. So if we go to texture and go click on image aspect, it'll correct it for you. So if we rotate, make it bigger and make it fit to kind of how it was, we knew that this line was lining up, didn't we? So, oh, we can use the name badge. That's probably the easiest thing to use. So name badge was about there, wasn't it? So if we can, we can literally just check. We had the name badge lined up to there, didn't we? So if we go in here, we can see it's way off. If we go to here, oh wait, it's simple enough, isn't it? Uh, we knew this top bit was a bit skew with, but I think that's, let's try it. So if we press this here, is it going to let me have my transparencies? I don't think it is, is it? we'll see. That's why I was saying like, I don't know how these fades are gonna work. We'll see, we'll see. Preview might just be a bit. Let's make sure you've got every little area. And then should we have a look? See the fades have worked on, let's go over to layout. There you go, see it better. So we can see it's gone on. These fades here, they've worked in the Photoshop sense, but when they come over here, they're not really working so great, or are they? I don't know. Should we check on our shader editor? See, now what we need to do is we need to do the color ramp trick, don't we? So, all the color mix. So if we just add a color, mix color, that's the one, and squidge it in this line here, we need to make sure that this one here is in the B. May as well select a color while we're here, we wanted some like that, didn't we? Yeah, and we need to make sure it's set to mix, and then we need to make sure that the alpha is plugged into the factor. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a blue coming through now. So that's kind of part one of the delivery. It looks like it's done the transparencies, actually. 
that's very good look, look at that that's a lovely transition fading in so it's not like hard horrible line because obviously you can't in 2d you can't really sculpt that bit but if you just do it in big chunks you get away with it that looks pretty cool so what we can do now is go back to texture paint and we get, we need to do the roof now don't we so if we come into here i remove this and we're probably gonna need to rotate that looking at that if we is that way you want it yeah as we'll zoom into the roof get that somewhere situated make this around about that size a little bit more maybe we can use the black bits to overlap so once you've got it in place it's a bit tricky i think we've got it <laughs> yeah so we can paint this on now i'm going with it <laughs> i'm going with it i took ages i probably edited it out well that took so long you gotta kind of like catch these black edges here I want a reasonably good line across there you can obviously put more effort in but i'm trying to speed things up here got schedule and all that that's one of spicy questionable but it'll do you know what i mean it'll do it's not bad is it should we turn off the scene what mint love it that's basically how you can make a livery for your car. Uh, I'm just going to finish off uh, the bonnet now, I think. So, in the end, ended up with something looking like this. It's, uh, I'm happy, you know what I mean? It did the job. The thing to note was, is when I was doing it, I noticed there was one problem with this here. It was, it was like, I had like a sheen on. I'd basically on a previous uh, material I had this turned all the way up and it created like this white hat effect it, like I thought I had issues but it wasn't it was that and another thing to note is when I was doing it I probably should have pointed out is when you're using your brush make sure it's turned the strength all the way up and you click this one because mine was on this one like that and it was only on like this much so the reason why I wasn't getting like full transparency was because of this. If you're copying and you have that same issue, that's what your problem is, basically. Yeah, and if you want to see this car in animated action, because it's actually is actually a full character look. Uh, can we move one? Yeah, look, the full character. So it should be in the next episode or an episode that's already out. This was kind of an episode where it was just like, well, I'm doing it. I might as well film it. So I filmed it. Yeah. So if you liked and enjoyed this, uh, comment below, say thank you or ask any questions. If you have questions, press the like button. It helps a lot and subscribe because I'll be making more videos and it encourages me massively if you subscribe and can make loads of weird stuff like this then. Did he just call us weird? That's totally not cool, bro. That <laughs> hurts my feelings, man. Hey, Kevin, we have a problem here? Yeah, these little samosas watching need to like and subscribe so I don't feel stupid with no friends. <laughs>